or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Hello everybody, my name is Lee the Road Gamer. So I did record this part and I kept going. But like it would be a studio decided not to freaking work. And so it was like the whole video is just Siori. I got really mad because I had to start all over again. And heard all the words I had all the read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyways. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. So, we are going with Sayori. Sayori. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but. Let's go. Okay. Whew. Let's get this reading over with. Alright. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Siri finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Siori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Hehe. <laughs> God. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull? Demonia! You're not thinking about the right way at all. It's not just about the reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you said the line in the poem, like, between my feet. The last remaining flower behind against the knee. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clean roots, choosing the final joy moments between my fingers. Oh, by the way, I increased the text movement so I can go through this faster. But to what ends, I have some of this joy. For now, when I took a nerve addiction, the once for his field before me, his buddy Baron Wasteland. Da da da. Like that! Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. That's the money for you. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. It doesn't mean that it's a pretty... ...endary... Contrast <laughs> to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I'm so excited. Festival is going to be so much fun. Sir Spencer stuff around in the hallway again. Hey, Demonia, this classroom over here is empty. Let's be in the mission. The mission? Uh. It's been a long time since I spent time with Siori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's, she's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going and adventuring with Yuri brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us enter the classroom. Siri heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Siri pulls, pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Siri starts pulling virtuous crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need the fi- Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for... 
the poster paper. Ah, I dropped it by accident. Okay, that's <laughs> smack. Yeah. Sorry, bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over the, her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead. Sorry, clutches her forehead. Gee, Siori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. So Siori is sitting on the floor. I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Siori. But it hurts! Just do it for a second. So she slowly raises her hands for her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Siori. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A pup is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swirl up. I should find you some ice. What do you, uh, where would I find? Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold trick would do. You don't have to. I'm from a, looking like a unicorn. Even in the pain, Siori makes a silly joke. Aha, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. I pat Sierra on the shoulder and run down the hallway. I look at Nero's vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter, it says it'll be used as an ice pack, rather than a drink. But I know Sierra likes apple juice, so I pushed that one. It's just a moment I'm going to return to the classroom where I left Sierra. She has one palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsy scoop crayons back to the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I split them. Sorry, here. I hand Zuri the bottle of cup juice. It's nice and cold. That's a big bottle of apple juice. I thought the apple juice was going to be small. Sorry <laughs> opens the cab and starts drinking from it. Sorry, what are you doing? For your forehead, idiot! Ah! Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? So you place the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings! Just bear with it. It will feel better soon. Looks like you didn't clean up the most of the crayons, so that's good. Demonia. This kind of reminds you of, of growing up, doesn't it? Uh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep you up with you. You were kind of obvious in some ways. Oblivious. Is it great? Was it oblivious? I don't know. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. Some, but sometimes I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I fell, scrap myself, get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over it as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. Because it also was like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it wasn't really your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time though. If I wasn't rushing out of a closet, you would be, you would have hit your head. <sighs> Demonia. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing out me even though I'm just being clumsy. You really is a sweetheart. D don't call me that! I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you're... When you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Demonia, I'm so glad nothing's changed between us. Do you think we'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair with me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing. So my hoops are up. I'm so happy. Sierra has a 
whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry, Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see her forehead either way. I don't know if I had it under my bangs. Sherry hops to her feet. Ah, ah, ah. She kisses her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. You. Well, I guess it's not too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Siri out of the classroom. Siri plays with her bangs, trying to hide in the bum. But without much success, any moment we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Uh, Siri, your forehead? She's fine, don't worry about- I was playing with the crayons, let's back my head in the shell. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Why am I laughing? Da da da. Da da da. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh huh. I'm right. Yeah. Sorry for the glasses around myself. I got all my stuff. Calm down, Siori. I've it all right here. I found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Melania. Ah uh, well, Siori. I forgot to come up with an excuse for Siori. I made an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I could share, grab mine. I have the sharing kind of close tightly and return to my seat. It's poem time! Reading poems. Oh, okay, we're gonna go with Malika first. I get pneumonia. How's Ryan going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I haven't that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with uh, the masterpiece. I don't know why I paused there. Haha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. I'll just share what you wrote for today. Sure, here you go. I can't my bone to Monica. Alright, it's pretty good. Makes me think of Siori, like the other one that you were worth. You two are really like a thematic duo. Ah, uh, that's kind of. excrementing. I almost got it right. Yeah, probably. But do you spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy, it's just. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I put a bit of pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. So don't, no, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to run from now? I like this way one turned out, so I hope you do, too. Let's take a look. Say me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless, crazy, of meaningless noise. The noise, they won't stop. Violent, feeling waveforms. Squeaking, screeching. Piercing sign. Cousin Tangent? I playing a chalkboard on the turntable. I playing a vinyl on the pizza crust. An endless poem on meaningless. Anything else? Load me. Okay. I 
don't think I should do that. <laughs> hmm. You have more rep check than the last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I wrote. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. It's really where I have the space your words could totally change the a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines are really short makes you feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Haha. <laughs> Sometimes I ask my poems about the other question. Poem can be abstract. It's just feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's my writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something expected may happen. Wait. What am I even talking about? Uh, that's not my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was something. Okay. Now we're gonna read uh, Yori's poem now. Let's see what you read for today. Da -da -da. Hmm. What the money? Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yori. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh, it, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire all the writers. I know you're not new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very empty ex exercise. I see. That's a so interesting technique. Oh. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that. If you like to read it. Of course. Is this poem you wrote for today? Pretty not that's what it has to be about. Oh, I'm gonna suck at reading this because I'm bad at because I'm bad at reading cursive. Even though I can't read cursive. Alright, Coon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a qu quietly snack. My attention was caught by the scarfing of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I've noticed my strange technique as an ignorant human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The certainly beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom? Sign? Oh. <laughs> the bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon energy. What does that say? The moon shines its rays and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glances in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Uh, perhaps I'm Really projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to used to know to each other. Quite used to each other. Okay. I get it. Harry becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. The classic premium conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. 
That was an interesting poem. Okay. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit close to my primitive writing style. Using the poem as a coast to express by vivid and imaginary and committing my emotions to them. Yeah, if I take it as a face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I guess certain that different people can relate to it in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep those myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. Maybe you want to make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that about you? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our indigitals. <sighs> I can't read. Even if it's difficult sometimes, something that goes so uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be writing a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Should I keep going? I don't know if I want to keep going. I... Yeah, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Natsuki. Oh, I was gonna leave her last. Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Uh, well, anything that isn't. The train wreck, I'll tell you as a win. And I'll get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, you know, was a compliment. Haha, <laughs> glad to see someone recognize my experience. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well then, keep practicing. Maybe you'll be as good as me. <coughs> Someday. God damn it. Yeah, I think I need to stop. After I'm done with next. After I'm done with Natsuki, I'm gonna stop there. And leave Suri last for the next video. Oh my god. Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Suri's poem from yesterday. Eh? I think so. Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as a type. Suri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging, dragging around a dead rate. Right, Wait, right. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> no. Uh, that was a little unnecessary, but to think of it the way it's- If it were for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing about my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus. My heart would pound to the rhythm, rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. 
Amy has a lot of friends. I'd always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders do? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps them private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Interesting moment. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I mean, didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, this is pretty straightforward in this film. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you explain Cumberland issues with some similar allergies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks I'm... That doesn't matter. Give me it about anything. Or it's to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby. Or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out. They make fun of you. Or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what, who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone. It makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Heh. <laughs> that's funny. I mean... Huh, that's funny. You really wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something about similar to you. And people shouldn't make others, each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not there's anything wrong with that. Mm. It's not like I'm a judge or anything. I just have trouble finding words. I guess I could try being so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I've always hated people who make me feel insecure. You know, you made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even though the writing style is different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. That's what I do best, after all. I don't like Ryan unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, creating emotions is important. But, I don't want to make people think. Not just me. Remember that. I'm just going to write a good one for tomorrow. So look forward to it. Alright, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> um, okay. Things. <sighs> Things are getting weird now and they, they keep getting weirder and a bit suspicious for Monica too um so I will stop here and for the next video of this game we'll be reading series poem and we'll go along the way wherever comes next so like if you like the video comment subscribe Thank you for watching. We're on Game It On, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!